YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host TKK and we are back with another video guys. Thank you for coming back and I do appreciate the support. All the ways you can support me are down below. Okay. Um, guys, we're going to be taking a look at a different type of product on the channel today. It's going to be a monitor, right? Although this might seem a little bit niche for you guys because you're more familiar and acclimated with me posting television reviews and uploads. You know, I typically go for at least one quality monitor per year. And this monitor today that we're going to be talking about unboxing and me offering a brief review on is actually going to be a follow up on what I'm going to card right now. So if you want to pause this video and see that you can. I used to own the LG 38 inch. It featured a 3840 by 1600 um, as, uh, resolution, excuse me, with the 21 by 9 aspect ratio at 30 inch again. This monitor, 45 inch, this is LG's flagship monitor for 2023 in the OLED space. This is offering us a 45 inch size display. So this is going to be absolutely massive. When you think about 45 inches, I mean, I have the G3 OLED TV um, that is 55. And so this is 10 inches shorter or smaller, not shorter, but smaller and it's diagonal um, frame, but this also is going to be a desk monitor. So it's sitting in front of me. So this thing is gonna be absolutely huge. The claim to fame to this is that it's ultra wide and it's OLED and it is 45 inch. So those collective mixes of seasoning should bring us a great package. You know, so if you featured or watched the channel last year, I did feature the uh, 32 inch G08 Neo monitor from Samsung, that's 4K, the first, 240 native refresh rate monitor that hit the streets and uh it's a great monitor if you guys want to see more content uh let me know and i'll bring it back to the channel but tvs are more my thing so i, I try to not oversaturate my channel with uh, monitor content but that monitor was great however it was a miniature led which is super bright super bright but you still have some blooming it also was curved so if you got into the middle of it you got that sweet spot everything looked nice and perfect you veer off to the angle a little bit more, you know, it doesn't look so great. This monitor changes that. And although it's not a native 4K in resolution, this is 3440 by 1400. Not something I'm particularly a fan of because I've been buying premium monitors way back before even the first Acer Predator. And that was 3440 by 1400 at 21 by 9 aspect ratio. However, this does feature a 240 hertz native refresh rate, which is going to speak specifically to what LG is on right now. They've got OLED flat screen monitors that are 27 inch that are 240 hertz. That's kind of like the combination QHD with 240 with OLED. And so that's pretty much what this gives you. So although I wish it did have 3840 by 1600, I can live with the 3440 by 14 because of the refresh rate and the clarity. So. I want to go ahead and take you guys on this venture on this. You do have timestamps below. Let's get to it. Unboxings are not the most entertainment, but we can get some more talk time in. Feel free to use the timestamps. However, they may be pleasing to you. So uh, just to reiterate some of the features to this thing, it's got less than a millisecond gray to gray. 800 R curvature. So this thing has an amazing bend to it 45 inch is the sizing and uh yeah i'm excited to test this out now this of course doesn't come with micro lens array i would expect to see that next year um to add micro lens array to this i think would absolutely kill the general market of people that might go after their white OLED TVs in the space of gaming. Keep it in mind, they still do have the C2 that's in 42 inch. Uh, that also comes in 48 inch. So we'll take a look at this thing in just a second. This is packaged really nice. You got two big styrofoam pieces. You got an accessory pack right there. The monitor, of course, I've already taken it out. And then the base, it comes in two different, two different uh, individual wrappings. Give you a shot at what's in this accessory box. It's going to be big power block. AC power cable to connect to that. You're gonna have that USB A to B 3.0 upstream cable. Comes with a HDMI cable. 
probably 2.0 because 2.1 isn't really a thing here. And then the display cable, which is what we'll be using. We'll have a transition talking about what we'll be using. And this monitor, like the BenQ that I featured on the channel, does come with a remote too. We'll take a look at this in just a few. The usual suspects with documentation for warranty and that type of thing. There's a battery that is for the remote. Not sure the model, we'll take a look at it though. Got a little tool here to kind of help us. And cable management little piece here, a little plastic piece there. So that's all what's in the accessory box for this. Okay, so taking a look at the base, the assembly looks super simplistic. You've got one piece that does have a nice NVIDIA G-Sync badge on it. We like to have that, us NVIDIA lovers. Um, this is gonna be the VESA piece where the, the monitor will actually kind of sit and clamp on. And then down below, you're just gonna kind of meet this groove with what we have here. So bottom of here, you're gonna have a, a I won't say solder, but a fixed um, flat screw there. And uh, just gonna kind of sit and set this here. We'll line that up like that. You flip this thing over and then you can just kind of screw this piece in. So uh, essentially a toolless, toolless uh, mechanism, which is always nice. But if you're into using a flat screwdriver, that is an option there. I'm not sure exactly uh, where the decision comes where we would use a flat screwdriver over a Phillips just because the Phillips puts you in a position where, you know, you just can, you can, um, you know, screw things down and, and it latches on. Um, but this works pretty well. So this is nice and firm. Weight of this feels like, I don't know exactly what this is, but it feels like something around like 12 pounds. I don't know, but um, I know that this is articulating. So once the weight of the actual monitor is there, we'll be able to swivel this left and right and uh, move it up and down. As you can see, there's a little bit. Now this, this monitor is this pretty big monitor. Um, so you, it's only so much moving you can and would want to do with it, but just give you a nice look at the, uh, the base, a nice Nvidia sticker there. I just want to keep that, hold that near and dear, but yeah, we're looking, looking good with this thing so far. We'll go ahead and we'll get the monitor, uh, put onto it now. All right. I'd like for this to be a clean install. So I'm going to leave the wrapping on the monitor and what I did was just I tore out a piece of the backing just so you can kind of see. So I'm going to kind of flip this thing around off camera so I can get a good grip on it. Coming back to you, get this thing installed. This is definitely something one person can do. If you don't feel comfortable, get two people involved. But yeah, now the focus on my camera might start to look crazy just because it's a black screen, but just want to kind of show you guys, this has the ability to push down, to push up, kind of swivel left, swivel right. You're not going to be doing much swiveling because again, big 45 inch. So cover that up, get you guys a shot of the the back of this thing. All right, and just a look at the back. This is on the tripod, but I'm holding it. So there's a, a peel finish there. You got the uh, the gamer logo there, the UG. That does have some illumination um, through and through. These are LEDs and such. We'll take a look at that within this review. Um, might not be the best but you've got the USB B there, a couple of USB A's there. So makes it so that, you know, you can, you can kind of manage some things, clean up some cables. You've got a display port here, two HDMI's there, optical there. So that's pretty awesome. This does tell us we have DTS X for the headphone jack that is down below. All right, let's get this content peeled off. Right. 
2023 this released sometime in february had my eyes on it i was kind of like eh, don't want to do it um ended up selling my 38 inch monitor that i tagged earlier and uh just said you know what let me go ahead and add it into the collection so we've got a nice peel there it's like a nice flat finish here there is some 3D feel to the, the UG logo. Yeah, this, this doesn't feel bad at all. It's, it's plastic, but this feels really nice. This is this is all plastic, but it I wish it had a texture feel to it. It doesn't, but there is like some kind of design there. Um, but yeah, Let's see if you guys got a good shot of this. All right. And I just wanted to point out, if you'd like to release this monitor, there's a button right here that you need to push in conjunction with you holding it from the bottom to kind of pull it forward. Um, so it is locked in from the top and the bottom, but this is going to release the bottom so that you can pull it out first. I'm not going to demonstrate that the monitor is set. I'm going to, you know, get some more content with a shot and then put it where its resting place will be. But I wanted to show that to you guys really quick. All right. So I wanted to talk about connections and such. So. As I said, you got the USB there. Basically what you do, you plug that in and then you're gonna match that with a compatible USB on your computer. Look for one that has the SS, super speed or whatnot. Um, get that in there and then it'll give you access to these two USBs offering you a similar data transfer. Um, again, this is all for the cable management side of it all. Um, makes it where if you've got a couple of peripherals you need to hook up like maybe a sound deck um, you know, that kind of cleans things up for you so that you're not running more things onto your desktop computer, uh, depending on where you have that set. So that's going to be that one option there. Um, also, again, this comes with a HDMI cable, which I won't use personally. DisplayPort is going to offer me everything I need. HDMI to HDMI is just pretty much is what it is. It does come with a DisplayPort cable for anybody that's newer, maybe you're only like into the TV contents. The DisplayPort cable looks totally different from HDMI. They look kind of similar, but not the same at all. Um, DisplayPort for the longest has provided us with the ability to do 4K at 144 Hertz, 240 Hertz now even with the Samsung Neo G8. Um, HDMI finally getting to a place where it can provide us some things like um, 120 Hertz. So DisplayPort is what I will be using. It's tried and true. And because this is for a gaming PC, which we'll talk about what's going to be connected to it for now for this video, it's going to offer you more DisplayPorts than HDMI. Uh, this is going to be the brick. Showed it to you a little earlier with the packaging. But again, this type of connection it has that is provided. And then you've got this circular connection that's going to go into the monitor right here to the right of those uh, USB uh, connections. Here is the other end of the brick. That connection is just gonna be streamlined, just kind of matching, matching that up. Once you've got that plugged in, kind of is what it is. And that's pretty much it. All right, so I wanted to get back into a vlog orientation to film this part of the remote, but because the remote is extremely important. And I feel like today, any monitor that considers itself to be premium needs to have a remote this is the remote okay and although this is a different manufacturer what i'm about to show you on screen now this is the samsung remote for the s 90 c um so looking very similar um so definitely didn't cheap out too much on it and pretty much what the remote is going to do is make it so that i'm not having to guess and push one button or two or three buttons to be limited to how I can control, you know, the settings and 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 contrast and the refresh rate and all the different amenities that this monitor is going to offer us. Um, I, I, as I said, you know, I, I think that any monitor that is premium or higher echelon needs to for sure have a remote and failure to do so just is no good. Um, the Chulix cabinet that I have back there. You know, when I featured that content earlier in the year, completing that build, I put the, the BenQ monitor that I bought last year early this time. This time last year, actually, I bought the monitor for that project. Um, you know, I got it with the intentions of knowing that I was 
I was going to need a remote because it's going into an arcade cabinet. So if I wanted to change things, how in the world would I be able to do it? So I was meticulous in buying that. I actually did not know that this came with a remote until I did a little bit more research after I picked this up last week. You know, so this is actually a really good feature. Just wanted to make sure that I shared my excitement. And if any manufacturer happens to see this, the more monitors we can get with remotes, the better. Now, I'm not sure exactly what the cost goes in. I know these things can be that expensive to produce. What type of technology goes into making the remote, you know, work with the monitor? I'm not sure, but it's trust me, it is definitely something that uh, we all would appreciate. All right. So I did misspeak. There looks to be no illumination here. None at all right there, but uh, it does follow on the left and the right. That is full RGB. So you pretty much have the full color spectrum to kind of do what you need. Um, all I did so far was just plug it up and it made a beep sound. It gave me some options, but those options went away. This looks incredible. Um, not sure how good the camera will articulate this. All right, so a couple of things I'd like to go over. Um, the actual monitor doesn't have speakers. However, if you can provide yourself with a decent pair of speakers, the included hardware within the monitor does a great job of passing through a quality sound of audio. I'm, I'm actually impressed with. Um, no way for me to really kind of test that for you or to show you. Uh, the remote also is pretty nice. So you've got uh, your ability to just volume up and down, super low latency from that perspective. Um, also with brightness too, got the brightness at about 70% uh, works for me. Right now I haven't toggled any settings or anything. And so uh, go into your, your actual settings. Um, every, the interface is, is, is I mean, if you've used an LG monitor, it, it's, it's pretty streamlined. You've got a couple of different uh, presets you can you know, kind of toggle through. Vivid, obviously turns it up. Gamer one, gamer two, you know, you just kind of, kind of go through all of these different options. I'll, I think I'll just turn this on Vivid for, for the sake of this. Um, when you go to game adjust, these are all the different options. You've got adaptive sync, obviously that's turned on. You've got the feature turned on already from the G3. Um, black stabilization or black stabilizer. Kind of turn it up or turn it down, you know, depending on what you want. 50 is the setting. I'm not, I'm not adjusting settings on here. I'll kind of mess around with whatever I want. A frame rate counter, you can turn that up. You can modify that to go into either of these corners. Let's just put it down. Let's put it, yeah, let's put it up top. So we'll put that there. Um, so good options there. Go down to picture adjust. Doesn't appear you can touch like sharpness right now, um, but you can definitely mess with the brightness. The brightness is at 100. This is Vivid, so Vivid might have it kind of, you know, set where you can't really do much, but you can adjust the contrast if you wanted to. I'll just leave it at the um, the 60 or the 70 that it was and put in your general. So for your headphones, you got presets there. So sound out, you can either do optical, uh, go to a sound bar or like a receiver or something like that. Again, taking whatever audio content that you have and, and just kind of, you know, doing this thing. You do, you do the headphone jack. Um, there's a picture and picture button that kind of pulls this up. We're not gonna mess with all of that, but pretty good option. There is a, a button on here for you to be able to toggle just what kind of sound put out you want. And then your presets, there's a DTX uh, preset button. Uh, it's pr pretty good setup, man. You know, I like it. There's an input button. I mean, the remote is just very helpful. I would be very frustrated if I was going through all of those different options to uh, check things out. Ooh, it's looking good. Man, this looks good. looks fantastic ok 
colors looking pretty good. Like I said, it's just out of the box pivot. Max settings just generally moving around. You can see where I'm at. So for the PC gamers, you know, 3440 by 1440 isn't nearly as taxing as uh, your, uh, your 4K gaming. Goodness, does it look good? Touching almost damn two hundred frames as I'm climbing. Yeah, it looks good and Monitor brightness, I got like another 25% it could go. I don't feel like it needs to be overly um, bright after adjusting it, you know, taking it down. Heck yeah, man, just look at that. Looks incredible. If they if they would have put MLA on this, it would have been like for for the gamer, you know, for the PC gamer at least, like get G3 for what? Um the whites on that G3 are like, ooh, they so pure. Man, look at that view. Looks good. I don't know how blue this is going to show, but uh, there's no warm base on here with Vivid. <clears throat> Man, yeah, it looks great. All right, man, I have a great appreciation for this thing. Um, you know, this isn't a monitor that's going to be for everybody. It's not really. Um, and the purpose of me even sharing this was just to bring a little bit of contrast to the channel in the space of uh, displays. We talk a lot about TVs here. Um, you know, monitors, I hold near and dear. Like I said, normally I'm going after at least one big boy per year. Sometimes two, like last year. We had the uh, we got the Mobius and we got the Neo G8, but you know it was time for my prior ultra wide to you know just be I don't know redone man. It's 38 inch and the blooming was bad and the fact that it had a physical G Sync module was cool. It was just I felt like I needed more and you know this I think is exactly the more that I needed. Yeah, but um, I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section below. I had to kill this guy. You know, this this thing is pretty cool. Uh, there will be more content on it if there happens to be some questions. It's amazing sitting in front of this thing, like even talking. It's like my my voice is just like bouncing off of it. It's, it's kind of crazy because it's so freaking wide and it just you just kind of engulfed into everything that it is but the black levels are good you know I, I can appreciate it even more now that i'm sitting in front of it filming this part and it was like um you know as i was as i was recording it when i had you guys in the middle of it i'm sitting on like the right of the monitor and so i mean things look good but i mean they look even better now um definitely the 38 40 by 1600 would have been preferred i'm not sure exactly why that wasn't an option with this but this thing is pretty solid, man. And then with my system, I'm, I was just in combat getting like 160 uh, five frames per second, max settings, everything turned up. And I mean, it just, it looks really good. So yeah, like I said, let me know what you guys think. And uh, I'll be sure to answer any questions that I hadn't answered. 
Um, you know, I don't often do reviews like early when I get products. I'm more of a buy it and then I experience it myself and then I just kind of gradually share my thoughts and my opinions. Um, but yeah, that's all we got. We're going to catch you on the next one. Peace. God bless. And as I always say, Max Love.